Right. You're trying to talk, and I won't. No, but I want to say something. Yeah, I'll say something. No, 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 no. Nah, 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 nah. I'm, I'm out of here. Oh, no. gosh. Mama Cash off the set. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Cash, and today I'm bringing you a new YouTube video. And as you can see, we have some company today. We got Mama Cash with us. Hi, guys. Do you want me to say your name? No, you can just say Mama Cash. We got Mama Cash. Hello guys and girls. This is gonna be a great video, but before we get into this video, I wanna thank everybody that's subscribing to the channel, leaving awesome feedback in the comment section below. And I know in some of the previous videos, some people were asking about my mom's birthday. Well, here she is right here. So if you wanna leave happy birthday or happy belated birthday in the comment section, she'd definitely be looking at that and be excited about that. Uh, but yeah, thanks everyone for subscribing to the channel. And if you're new to the channel, please review some of our content. And if you enjoy what you see, go ahead and be a part of this community by hitting that subscribe button. So before we start the video, I wanted to give my mom some time to express herself, share with us some of her personality, some things that she likes to do so we all can get to know my mom. And hopefully we see her in some future videos. So mom, what would you like to share with everybody? Something I'd like to share with y'all that is interesting to me about my life is over 20 plus years I dealt with arthritis. I had to take injections and take different type of medication because of my arthritis was very very severe and my son met a, a friend of his who was big in the vegan industry and they came up with the idea that if I started making changes in what I consume that maybe it would reverse my arthritis. So they put me on this program where they had me drinking various types of juices, all natural. The, the one that was the most effective one for me was they put me on the, what they call the green juice, that consists of all types of greens and herbs and spices. And I would drink this product probably twice a day. And uh, then they changed, took me off of all dairy, sugar, practically 100% vegan, because that's basically what I was, because they made sure <laughs> that I ate everything that was uh, free of animal fat and sugar and, and things of that nature and dairy. So that lasted for me for about a year and a half. And then I started noticing that I didn't have to consume my medicine. I'd go to the doctor and my reports, uh, they would take your blood samples and things were looking better every time I would go. And eventually I stopped taking the medication completely. I guess it's been like four years now that I have not had any medications related to my arthritis. I exercise, I work out at the gym, I walk. I just do normal activity, no swelling of the joints. And my son says it's because when I clean my system, it, it eliminated the inflammation in my body. So my body started healing itself. So I am truly grateful uh, that I trusted his advice. Uh, it was hard at first, but then I realized to become vegan, you keep the same spices that you're familiar with. It's just using different types of plants. You're using plants instead of meat. And then, so the spices made it easy for me to switch from eating meats over to plant-based foods, thanks to my son and his friend. For those who are listening, we're not here to offer any medical advice or insight. We're just showing that there's alternative methods to cure the body. And we're just sharing a story of someone who had arthritis over 20 years. They were almost up to taking eight pills a day, went through the process of injecting needles into their thighs. So this isn't medical advice. This is just a story of someone who had arthritis because I know a lot of Americans suffer of arthritis and she stayed committed to a plant-based diet. And you can try other diets to see what worked for you. I'm not saying plant-based is the one that works for everybody, but it was the one that helped my mom reverse something that she had for 20 years. And uh, she has an interesting story to share that basically when you went to go see your doctor and they saw that you didn't have the inflammation anymore, what was... What was that like? Well, they never would inquire as to what are you doing? Is it the medication? But he knew I was never filling the prescriptions. <laughs> I, st I stopped filling the prescriptions without him telling me uh, it was okay to do it. But like my son say, that may not work for everyone. It worked for me. So um, I'm just grateful that I trusted what they advised me to do and it worked. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about life advice, or you can interject life principles, that's always heard 
but maybe not always applied. And I think that's gonna be a great topic today. Just a reminder for all of us that here are some things that we can make more of an effort to apply in our lives daily, to improve in areas of our relationships, coworkers, family members, et cetera, et cetera. So the first tip that we wanna talk about is listening before you speak. I'm pretty sure a lot of us have been in situations where we've gotten advice, maybe unsolicited advice from someone who did not listen carefully and gather enough information before they decided to project their opinions and insight on a situation and by doing that it leads to maybe in some situations speaking out of turn or giving incorrect information exactly. how do you feel about that I agree because when you're speaking before you get the complete story of what's happening you're not really valuing that person's opinion you're just talking you want to get out what you want to say versus actually getting an understanding of what they're trying to present. And so it seems like your opinion is more important than really understanding the person's needs or concerns. From your experience in life, it may come across that the person who's volunteering their advice is rushing into conclusions without having all the information. Exactly. And that can cause a lot of hurtful feelings for the one that has the concern because it shows that you're not really interested in giving me the right advice. You just want me to hear what you have to say. So I used to always tell my son, are you listening? I always make sure you're listening. When I'm trying to teach him something about life, even when he was younger, I always say, are you listening? That's all he used to hear from me. And it's so important. Uh, whether you're dating, whether you're just having a conversation with a loved one in your family, listen so you can show to that person that you are important to me and I want to get the facts. I want to give you the proper response or we can go and research and get the correct answers versus just me just speaking out of terms and don't have all of the information first. I like that answer. So one thing we have to look at when we want people to listen to our answers and response, we're trying to lead them to what we believe is true. And that's one of the great skill sets of being a leader. A leader won't have people to follow them if they're giving out wrong information due to lack of context, lack of information, whatever falls under leadership skill sets. If you're going to provide valuable information, you need to make sure that you have enough data to be able to give proper feedback. Exactly. In order for a leader to be effective, uh, the team that he's trying to lead must see that he's also a great listener. So when uh, the team is giving feedback, that he entertains their concerns, listen very well, and be able to provide information because he has listened. He like respected them enough to hear what they have to say. So to wrap this up, some of you may be thinking I'm not in a position of leadership. And one thing that my mom and I would like to clarify is that you don't need the title of leadership. We're just trying to show how you can convey a message to that individual who you're trying to provide information to. Here are some skill sets that you should try to reinforce in your life. So therefore you can have effective communication and proper feedback and come to a healthy resolution together where both sides feel like they have been heard and listened to. So when you're listening to someone, you gain their respect by if you're able to restate their concerns or you take in notes as they speak, then they realize that you're actually listening. You're really concerned with trying to come up with the right solution for the problem. So it's just like when, if you was a lawyer and you, you're trying to represent a client, your ability to restate their concern is very powerful to that person. And then you get a better outcome because you've gained their respect and they have gained your respect because you are able to restate the question. So when you're trying to advise someone, show them respect by how you approach the situation that they're explaining to you. Mama Cash, drop the mic. In the comment section, make sure you show my mom some love. This is her first time doing a YouTube video. I think she's cool, just like me. Uh, I mean, y'all let me know if I'm cool. You are uh, cool. Uh, <laughs> Life principle number two, showing acts of kindness, even though the other person may not deserve it. That's something my mom and I try to implement on a daily. Now, I'm not saying we do this every day, but we strive to try to do this every day. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, nobody's perfect. And some people know how to push our buttons more so than other people, which leads us to getting out of character. 
but I believe in my heart that if we strive to try to show kindness to people, we can create better environments, healthier environments where we can come together as a family, we can come together as a community and workforce and just create healthier spaces in society where we can have a forgiving heart for each other and just a kind spirit. The reason why I bring up acts of kindness is because sometimes the individual that may be pushing us to act out of character could possibly be having a bad day. Maybe they got into some type of accident before you stepped into their life at that moment. And if we act out of character in that moment, it could easily trigger that person to have a response that they normally don't do. So yes, I am asking of us to be the bigger person in these situations. I'm not recommending anyone to get taken advantage of or abused, but just trying to see life from the other person's perspective and just saying, hey, maybe they had a rough day. You need to ask yourself, is this a repeated behavior? If it is a repeated behavior, then you should speak on it in a way that's healthy. But if it's just a one-off situation, continue to try to show acts of kindness to people because kindness and love is something that we all need in life because we're we're all dealing with stressful situations. So here's an example of an act of kindness that I would like to share with you. When you're at the grocery store and you're checking out, say thank you to the cashier or comment on something that she's done or how she handled your groceries. And when you go out in the parking lot, continue with the act of kindness because the guys who are collecting the grocery baskets, they're, you know, they're making a sacrifice. Sometimes it's raining, sometimes, you know, it's really, really hot. So let's not forget that they need encouragement or act of kindness, just acknowledging that we do appreciate what you do. And then another form of act of kindness is um, when you see people out at the restaurants, you know, your waiter, sometimes they make mistakes. Let's try not to overemphasize the mistakes they made, but just appreciate them for being there to serve. So let's think about others, uh, how we would like to be treated as we serve, that someone would acknowledge what you do. So the reason why we're putting an emphasis on acts of kindness is because there's multiple environments and situations where that act is called upon us just to be encouraging citizens in this world. And I'm sure plenty of us have had to implement that in our homes, just in our own family dynamic, whether that's in regards to a loved one, spouse, children, whatever the case may be. There's been plenty of times where someone deserves punishment, but we choose to have mercy and compassion for them, which is an act of kindness, because we're all not perfect and we deserve forgiveness. So that leads me into my third life principle that my mom and I have decided to come up with, which is always try to have a forgiving spirit. We've all made mistakes. None of us are perfect. Though we strive for perfection, it is never achieved. Mm -hmm. And depending on how we respond to other people when they make mistakes in their lives, mm -hmm. really reflects our character of how hard we can be on someone when they deserve to have more love and compassion mm -hmm. placed upon them. So forgiveness is really essential for any relationship. I agree. You agree with that? I agree wholeheartedly. You know some people who need to have a forgiving spirit? Yes, because when you don't forgive, you're actually causing more harm to, your, to yourself mentally and physically. So forgive and move on because like he said, we all do things or say things we actually doesn't mean. And so when another person doesn't forgive you, it's a burden and it's the one that will not forgive it's where the burden lies and so let's learn to forgive and do something kind for that person because a lot of times people are just angry internally and they've never been treated with love they don't know what it means to have someone to actually just love them because not love you because you did this for me or you bought something for me but just genuinely love and so many people are suffering from that. So forgiveness is one way to show them that I love you in spite of. So let's learn to forgive. So another point I wanna to add to my mom's statement about forgiveness is that when you don't forgive, you're internalizing and holding on to pain. When the other person, I always say, they could be at happy hour celebrating. And instead of moving forward with our lives, we're holding on to pain, discomfort, misery, something that's really a thorn in our side. That's why it's so important to let go because if you don't work on strengthening that skill set of letting go, you're gonna hold on to years of trauma and these people have moved on with their lives. It's just not healthy for us to stay in that point in time of pain because there's a lot in life for us to enjoy and to experience. 
but we have to let go of those things that don't serve us. Just have a forgiving spirit. That's the point of this principle. Learn how to forgive so you can move forward with your life. So if you made it to this part of the video, we have a bonus tip for you, a bonus life principle that you can add to your life and start implementing right now at this moment is to be a conversation starter. The reason why I say be a conversation starter is because as we navigate through life, we notice that our friends list starts to fluctuate, even our family members. And by being in a position of starting a conversation always keeps you in the opportunity of meeting someone that you share the same values, common interests, you probably make similar jokes or you laugh at the same jokes. I don't know if anybody's ever been at the movies with somebody and the person you took, you all laugh at different jokes. And it's like one person sees it as that's funny, the other person like that wasn't funny. Not funny. So being a conversation starter is really essential and important because it keeps you in the circle of community, meeting people that you probably wouldn't have gone up and spoken to. You don't want to be in a position where you have more people leaving your life than people coming into your life. So never be afraid to just go out, start a conversation with somebody. You may say, well, how do I start a conversation with someone? All you have to say is like, hey man, I like those shoes. I saw those online. Yes. You don't have to know what website you saw the shoes on. You don't even need to know what the shoes are called. It's just, once you give someone a compliment, it mm -hmm. breaks down barriers where you can finally connect with somebody. So you, that connection in that example is over shoes. Uh, for me, I like to connect with people over glasses. I'm, I can't see, like I'm nearsighted. So I can see up close, but far away, I won't recognize you. But I always compliment people on their glasses because I know like growing up, a lot of people had insecurities about their glasses. So you just find a way to connect with someone and uh, you never know where that may lead. It may be a simple conversation, just a one-time thing, or it could turn into something where you all are like friends five years in just because you gave them a compliment and it'd be a good way to reflect and say, do you remember how we met? Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, we, we met because we were at Warby Parker and you actually like my glasses. What do you think about being a conversation starter? Cause you're in sales. I'm in sales. So you know. I'm always starting conversations. You always talking. <laughs> that is so true. But a um, long time ago, we were taught when we walked into a person's environment in their office or whatever scan the room as quickly as you can and try to find something that you see when you scan it you're going to see things that they're interested in I, at, at one time most of my bars was just males so most of them were either interested in football fishing hunting or baseball so i would always if it was about baseball i had to know what the scores were and Kansas City Chiefs, I mean Kansas City Royals played, or if it was football, the Chiefs, or fishing, you know, I'd see something, say, oh my God, I've never seen a fish that large before, or whatever. And so I would relate to something that I saw that they were doing, uh, that they had posted in their office or on the, a picture or something. So the conversation would get started. And when I first started uh, working in sales, I was pregnant and like all of my buyers, at least three of them, wives were pregnant. And so they would always want to know, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? I would always get the sale <laughs> because they wanted me to be safe. They always gave me a phone number to call if I'm out in, up in, in, in the area at night to call them if something happened because back then we didn't have cell phones. So it was about just finding something in their environment that you could relate to quickly and start the conversation. So you must be talking about the 80s or 90s. I ain't had no cell phones. Well, that's for me to know. <laughs> for you to want to know. <laughs> we got quit. If you want to know what era she's talking about, put that in the comment section. I'm going to go with the early 90s. We got to see how y'all was dressing back in the in the 90s. Oh, we were cool. I, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to get my coolness from you. I understand. Yep. Just to summarize some of our talking points, we believe that it's important that you have great listening skills, show acts of kindness, have a forgiving spirit, and not being afraid to start a conversation. So I want to thank you for watching today's video. I hope that the words that my mom and I shared with you sit well with your heart and resonates with your spirit. If you enjoyed today's content, please leave a like on the video and also subscribe 
to the channel as well and for those if you haven't hit that notification bell make sure you do that as well so you never miss a video when i post on the channel we'll see you in the next video i want to thank you all for allowing me to have my mom here today Woo so if you want to see mama cash in the next video or some upcoming videos give us some ideas of what we should talk about together and uh, put that in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next video all right peace out peace out it was good. It was clean, safe, I bet. Yeah.